Just wanted to share with you guys a little overview and inside view of this uh, Krell S1200U. Okay, uh, basically, this is actually the 1200U 3D. It was originally a S1200, but I had it upgrade, upgraded at Krell to the S1200 3D, U 3D. Basically, this means that it can upscale any source uh, component composite S video up to 1080i through the uh, HDMI output and uh, okay these are the two chips that do that it can it's the uh, scaling chips this chip and that chip those are responsible these are your components uh, these are your component inputs outputs and that's your S video I think I'm not looking at the back but I think that's the S video and your composites likely further on down but uh, it converts everything it sends it to this board and it converts it through those chips through your HDMI output. Okay, uh, your HDMI uh, re receiver is, uh, this is the HDMI receiver for these two HDMI inputs and this is the HDMI receiver for those two. And uh, that's your output. I actually had a problem with this a while back and uh, it was having worse HDMI problems on these two and so I replaced that IC but that didn't resolve the problem. Come to find out later Krell has these uh, updates and uh, firmware and hardware updates that they do for these you know that these need to have done to uh, to comp to fix the problems. It seems like the silicone after so many years uh, in quite up to tolerance or whatever and you start having an HDMI problem so any of these units that's not upgraded to the uh, latest update or within so many upgrades you'd probably to ask Carl Krell and see what's the latest uh, last upgrade that you know that would need to be done you know each each unit's different you just have to give them your, ser your serial number but uh, so I pr pretty much changed that for nothing but uh, so I had this had it upgrade fixed all my problems and those uh, they have a great service department there and uh, you know did a really good job but uh, okay so uh, okay so that covers uh, what I know about this board there's some other chips that I don't know what to do that looks like a RAM chip and possibly a program chip because you've got the uh, connector connection right beside it so likely that's how they do the firmware upgrade but not exactly sure they may do it some other way but uh you got a little sub board down there and that's where your dac is your digital analog, digital to analog converter and your dsp sections you know basically uh your dsp basically feeds the signal into the dacs and then it sends it up to this board to your output through the uh analog stage you know for your uh, analog section so uh, not sure if y'all can see it but that board where you see the lights that is the uh, output board and it's a massive output it's running in pure class A mode and what those lights are for if you're servicing this if you, ha if you have all the boards out and you have that board in it basically kind of gives you a blueprint of uh, if, if a light's out or dim, it's basically telling you there's a problem in that part of the circuit. And, uh, you know, this one actually, I bought this none working. And before I got it to the stage that I was worried about the HDMI outputs, I had a heck of a time. I had to replace over 100 transistors. So uh, it had like DC in all the channels. And, uh, you know, had, basically you can measure the DC on those boards but uh, yeah it uh, I think I had to replace the transistors in like three channels three or four channels and I ended up having to replace all the caps you know and that's something else if you're buying one of these in the used market that hasn't been sent to Krell you're probably going to need to have them recapped because running in class A all the time and it's a small space under there those caps heat up over time so uh, that's just something that you're probably going to have to do if, if you're buying one of these. So if you're buying one of these as is, keep all this in mind. But, uh, you know, try to make sure that every channel works so that if every channel works, you can possibly send it in and just pay Krell to do a 
you know, update or whatever. But if you got bad channels, you're going to have to have a lot, you know, if you're not a tech yourself, you're going to have to, you know, pay Krell to do a lot of extra work. So just keep that in mind if you're buying something used in the uh, market. Okay, so uh, the bottom board is uh, re the regulation board. And as you can see, it's pretty hefty. It's got... Uh, it's got it's using the uh chassis as a uh heat sink and uh you know it's multi-stage regulation and uh well that may be the firmware update chip that's probably your firmware update chip so yeah because that looks like the firmware that firmware is written on it that the old firmware this has been updated to uh i'd have to cut it back Kill the power cut. Let me do that right quick and show y'all. This is where you see the uh, firmware on these. When you first cut the hard power on, when it's booting up, it's going to tell you the firmware. And uh, that's your latest ones. If, if you have any of them updated, they'll upgrade to the latest 3D and everything. They used to charge a, a big amount for this but it's, it's quite a bit less now I think so uh, you know like I said they're great the fact that they support a processor that's 15 years old or whatever this is it's, it's just amazing but uh, these are great processors I'd highly recommend anyone that got a chance to, to get one even though they won't do the latest greatest uh, Ultra HD you can always get a Blu-ray player with dual outputs or uh, or you could up, you know, if you if you want to just have a one set box, you could update to their foundation. I have a foundation also, and I think I slightly this was my all time favorite processor. I think I slightly prefer the foundation. It's just got a little bit better digital section. But uh, but on you know they both got pros and cons. Like uh, the foundation doesn't have multi channel inputs. And this does, but the foundation really doesn't need them because it's got built-in DSD through the digital. So if you got Super Audio or something like that, you can just... And I tried it. I ran my Super Audio player directly through it. And, you know, it detected the DSD and worked just fine. But uh, these, on the on the behalf of these uh, over the foundation, they would be easier to mod. I mean, you got... Uh, if you didn't want to gut the whole machine and do a complete recap and and all that change everything i mean you got the regulator stages right here you can uh you could tap on extra caps right here you just have to probably would go over 50 percent of whatever the value is you know it's just a general rule in electronics you don't want to go over 50 percent on a bypass cap but uh, i know somebody that's done it and they hadn't had any problem but i'm just saying in general to be safe about it i probably would go over 50 percent you know if you're bypassing the caps but uh yeah uh and down there you got your toroidal transformer which uh is, you know it's cleaner than a regular transformer and uh there's your uh multi-stage digital encoder right there you know it's like a volume control but it's kind of like a mode switch as well it's uh it's got uh it, it's basically optical you know instead of uh it's got optical sensors and it just when it goes around it uh you know it's kind of a it's kind of hard to explain really but uh these are very expensive i know because i had to buy one one time i think they're it's close to a hundred dollars if i'm not mistaken but it's pretty expensive but uh yeah these are great units so uh anyway i just want to share this with you guys and hope y'all have a good one